communicate between lines. Now, the input function again is going to return a string. We need to make sure it's an actual float. So I'm going to call the float function around everything that has been returned by the input function. We're exceeding this line, so we need to break it. I'm going to break it somewhere around here. Close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of the string. Um, break it somewhere around here by typing in a backslash, hit enter. Still exceeding. Uh, actually, hold on. Let's undo, break it somewhere around here. Close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of the string. Break it somewhere around here. Type in a backslash, hit enter. We're good. Okay. Should have done something similar with this, actually. Okay. <laughs> so now we have our three values. Now we can go ahead and put together our formula. Because it looks like we have everything, right? We have our R, which is the length of the row and feet. We have it here. We have our E, which is the amount of space in feet, which we have here. Use the amount of space used by and post assembly. And then we have our E, which is, um, sorry, we have our S, which is the space between vines. Use the amount of space between vines. V is the number of grapevines that will fit in a row. That's what we're calculating at the end of the day, right? Write the program that makes the calculation for the vineyard owner. The program should ask the user these things, and then it should calculate and display the number of grapevines that will fit in a row. These are the number of grapevines that will fit in a row. So the number of grapevines that will fit in a row, we can create a variable um, that's going to store that. Um, or let's see here. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's create a variable that's going to store that. So number of grapevines that will fit in a row. So let's call this number of grapevines in row, something like this. So it's equal to r minus 2e, 2 times e. So we know r is the length of the row in feet. We have it here, user length, user length of row. So r is our user length of row. So let's put parentheses around this. Minus 2 times e. e is the amount of space in feet used by an end post assembly. User amount of space used by an end post assembly. That's what we have here. And then we close our parentheses and then all divided by s. s is the space between vines in feet. We have it here. Number of, never mind, uh, user amount of space between vines, right? So that's our formula right here. We're exceeding the line, so we need to break it somewhere. Um, I'm going to break it somewhere around here. Don't confuse this backslash with a division sign. This is a division sign. This is the line continuation. Again, to be fair, if I'm going to remove this for a second. If you're in parentheses, you don't need the backslash. You can just hit enter and you should be fine. Um, but out of habit, I'm just going to stick with it. Um, but you don't have to if you're in parentheses. So I'm going to use backslash and break it somewhere around here. Hit enter. And I'm going to break it some more um, around here. I know it's a bit weird with the whole division sign, but I'm going to type in the backslash, hit enter. Just know that the backslash is a line continuation character. It allows you to break the line um, and still keep it functional, keep and still keep it working. So I know it looks very very weird with the with the whole formula, but it works, right? And we'll find out in a second. Alright, so it looks like we have our calculation. Now um, let's display the result. And we can use a print function to do that. So print what we want to print is the, um, the number of group lines that will fit in a row. And so let's start a string, say number of grapevines that will fit in a row. And so that's our first argument. Um, actually, I'm just going to keep this keep this as a first argument, and then a comma, and then our next argument. The next argument is going to be the number of grapevines that will fit in a row. Um, by default, when you are Parsing uh, like passing arguments into the print function, they're going to be displayed with a space separate in them. So it's going to display number of grapevines that will fit in a row, colon, and then there's going to be a space and then number of grapevines in a row, the value of that. Um, also, we want to make sure that this value is formatted to let's say about two decimal places. We don't we can you can format it to any number of decimal places. Let's format it to two decimal places so we have control of uh, the value. So I'm going to call the format function around it. 
Now the format function takes in what you want to format and then how you want it formatted. So what I want to format is the number of group files in a row. And the next argument is how I want it formatted as a format string. So inside I want it formatted as a floating point value, F as a floating point value. This is the conversion character. And then now I'm going to specify the precision. How many decimal places do I want this formatted to? The precision goes before the conversion character, so I'm going to type in 0.2 to represent two decimal places. If I wanted this value formatted to three decimal places, I'll type in 0.3. But I want two decimal places, so I'm going to type in 0.2. So precision goes before the conversion character. All right, so number of group lines that will fit in a row, then there's going to be a space, and then the value of what, um, whatever is stored here, formatted to two decimal places as a floating point value. We're exceeding this line here, so I'm going to break it. But before I do that, um, um, actually, this is fine. I don't, I don't want to change the separate uh, spaces. Uh, space is okay. Um, let's go ahead and break this line. I'm going to type in a backslash and break it somewhere around here. Again, if you're in parentheses, you don't need a backslash. I'm just going to continue doing that. All right, so I think we're done. Let's test it to see if we have any errors. So let's save it. I'm going to save it where I save my programs, code, Python, YouTube, <laughs> Python programming challenges. This is a chapter two program. I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to call this, uh, what, what is this called by the way? Yeah, plant and grapevines. Plant and grapevines. And then I'm going to save this as plant and grapevines. Finds.py. All right, save this, and it's asking us, please enter the length of the row and feed. By the way, I do not know anything about grapevine. So, you know, the first time I worked on this program, I was getting negative numbers, and it didn't make any sense to me. So I don't know if we got the formula wrong. The good thing is that we, we understand the programming concept. So if you realize that the formula is off, just tweak it. Tweak this formula a little bit. Uh, you have our values. You can do anything you want with them. Just tweak the formula. Um, and I can't tell if these numbers even make sense because most of the time I was getting negative numbers. Um, <laughs> let's uh, make sure I put a colon here just so it doesn't look like it doesn't look awkward. So a colon here, a colon here, and run this program again. All right. So please enter the length of the row in feet. I can't tell you if this is correct. I'm going to type in 56. Please type in the amount of space used by an end post assembly. Again, I can I don't even know what this means, what an end post assembly is. 34. Please enter the amount of space between vines. I don't, again, in feet, I couldn't tell you if this is accurate. 78. Hit enter. Just like I was saying, I was getting negative numbers. <laughs> I can't tell you if this makes any sense or what I inputted made sense. The most important thing is that we understand how to code, how to code it. We understand how to put together a formula. So if you realize it's this is inaccurate and it's from the formula, just tweak the formula. And if you or or if you realize or if you if it's from the values I'm I'm giving it, if it's not making any sense, then make sure you give it the right values, and we should be good. Apart from that, if you have any questions, please post down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time in the next video. All right then, bye bye.